Welcome to Azeroth, the world, or planet rather, of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a fantasy game created by the gaming company Blizzard. Azeroth is divided into three major continents, Kalimdor, Northrend, and the Eastern Kingdoms. It is full of mystical people, cities, and adventures. It only suits that the world should be dynamic as well. Considering thousands of people can be playing in the world at one time, it has to be in order to keep their interest. In some cases, the change in landscape from one area to the next can be rather extreme. In other areas, the transition from one section to another is hardly noticeable. The world seems quite fluid. However, the fact that it is a game has influenced how the world must be. The object of the game being to obtain the highest level of combat expertise, the land masses are sectioned off into areas where there are only monsters of a certain level range. Once the area is no longer a challenge to your adventurer, you can move into the more difficult areas. This means that the developers of the game had to be creative to keep people from unwittingly wandering into places far too dangerous. So rather than a seamless expanse of world that is easy to transverse, they had to barricade each area, creating what are called zones. To look more natural, they of course had to use the world itself to create these sectioned off areas. It's possible to imagine that these zones could all be tiny plates mashed together, but we're going to take a closer look. Naturally, it would take hours to examine every quirky feature the world has developed, so we'll just be looking at a few. First, let's take a look at how Azeroth functions as a planet before we go into details. First of all, we're going to try and answer the question, how big is Azeroth? Now, I wasn't the only one who was curious about all this game science. Recently this month, PC Gamer also decided to investigate. As the ocean is dangerous, we're going to have to use the land as a measure. I'll stick with PC Gamer's choice and use Elwyn Forest in the Eastern Kingdoms. Using their method, we assume that the average walking speed of a human male is about 3.5 miles per hour. Now, all playable characters in World of Warcraft walk at the same speed. So if we assume that this elf here is a typical example, and we can find a long, straight line to walk, well, let's get walking. Just kidding, I won't make you watch that whole thing. But the method was in fact sound. It took PC Gamer 18 minutes and 15 seconds to walk the line, and it took me roughly the same. Assuming that the magazine had more time to test this, I'm going to use their values just in case. And what that time means is that Elwyn Forest is about 1.1 miles across. What does that mean for the planet? It means that Azeroth is really small. Extrapolating the Elwyn Forest ruler, it turns out that the Eastern Kingdoms are in fact only 3.6 miles horizontally across, and 8.9 miles across vertically. The whole continent is more like an island by Earth standards. Using the ruler again, PC Gamer determined that the diameter of the planet must only be 7.5 miles. This means that the planet of Azeroth would fit on San Francisco and barely go over the edges. If Earth were that small, we'd all float away. Now obviously, the people of Azeroth don't float away. So what is the gravity of this little planet anyway? With some virtual suicide in the name of science, it turns out that gravity is pretty much the same as Earth's, only slightly more, as things fall at a rate of 34 pe feet per second, as opposed to Earth's 32 feet per second. That means that Azeroth must be made of something incredibly dense, something that weighs 5.9 kilograms per cubic centimeter, according to PC Gamer. That's 500 times heavier than lead. That means its people must also be made of tougher stuff than us, as they'd have to be incredibly strong to pick up anything. Once it had fallen to the floor, the finest layer of Azeroth dust covering an object would render it too heavy for any normal human to lift. Now, putting all that together and just assuming that it all works, let's take a peek at some of the more curious features these land masses hold. We're going to start off up here in northern Kalimdor and take a look at Moonglade. Moonglade is surrounded by an almost perfect circle of mountains. In fact, there's no break in the mountain chain. The only entrance and exit other than flying is to travel through tunnels. 
There's also the distinct fact that there's a lake in the middle. Now, Azeroth is riddled with mountain chains and rings, but very few make such a clear circular shape. My first idea was that this was likely a caldera from a past volcano. In fact, it looks a whole lot like Mono Lake in California, which is part of the Long Valley caldera. But there really isn't a whole lot of evidence of volcanic activity in Northern Kalimdor at first glance. Certainly no active volcanoes up here. It is one of the more lush areas in general. But why don't we take a look under this lake? Well, look at that. A fissure. Small, but enough reason to take this investigation further. Why don't we explore the surrounding areas for any other signs of activity? Over these hills is Winter Spring, which is right about here on the map. It's the northernmost zone of Kalimdor. And would you look at that? Right as we fly over the western border, there are hot springs and geysers. There are quite a few of these in western Winter Spring. It is also probably the area of highest elevation in Kalimdor, raising to its highest along the eastern border. But rather than a mountain range, the eastern face is made up of sheer cliffs. They are the most spectacular cliffs in the entire game. In fact, according to the map, these cliffs meet the ocean directly. We can't get down to the water here to investigate for any clues as to a subduction zone, but I would still expect to see a less steep incline and for this ridge to be a little further inland. Once again, I looked to the real world for examples for some help. What I found were the Kalapapa Cliffs on Molokai Island in Hawaii. These are the highest sea cliffs in the world, dropping over 3,000 feet into the Pacific Ocean. It turns out that these cliffs were the result of a catastrophic collapse one and a half million years ago, leaving the northern half of the island as a debris field scattered across the ocean bottom. It looks very likely that this could explain our winter spring cliffs. It's rather amazing that part of a volcano could just collapse like that. But what it means is that it's likely these cliffs were once also a volcano, before suffering a collapse that left these devastating cliff faces behind. <laughs>